this video I'm going to explain what a subspace is and try and keep it as simple as possible and just get straight to the point. So, the very basic idea of the subspace. A subspace is a space within a vector space. The vector space is the bigger, uh, the whole space, which satisfies two criteria. There's two rules that define if something is or isn't a subspace and they're very simple rules. So the basic rules are, for W, which is our subspace, to be a subspace you must be able to do two things to it. You must be able to add any two vectors in W. All right, so U plus V, there's two vectors U and V. Add those two vectors together and you're still within your space W. All right, and remember that these two vectors have to be in W. U is a vector in W and V is a vector in W. These vectors must be in the subspace and when they're both added they must still be within the subspace. Right? And you have to be able to multiply by any scalar so k times some vector u, k is just a constant, a scalar, k times u is still in W. The symbol here just means part of the set. So u plus v is part of the set of w, so you can just read that as being still in w. And you must still be in the subspace after you do any of these two things. Add any two vectors, multiply by any scalar, and still be in the subspace. And you might as well remember that all subspaces must include the zero vector. So a quick way to identify if something is not a subspace is to look at it and say, does it include the zero vector? And if it doesn't have the zero vector, it cannot be a subspace. Because if you multiply um, a constant times zero, then you're always going to get zero. So if the zero vector is not there, there is a constant that you can multiply by and not be in the subspace. So the best way to really get the idea of a subspace into your head is to look at various things and decide if they're a subspace or not a subspace. So how about this here? This is just uh, 2D plane, so we're talking about R2, which is essentially two dimensions. So the vectors have two components. Right? So we've got this space here, which is a plane. Um, and is this a subspace? So Think of the rules. Here's a vector. Here's another vector. Both of those vectors are in that subspace. Can we add those two vectors and still be in the subspace? No. That there is not in the subspace. So it doesn't satisfy that criteria. What if you multiply by a scalar? Let's say we we'll multiply that vector there by some scalar. That's a big scalar. That is not in the subspace. So this is not a subspace. It breaks both of the rules. What about this? Right? This line goes on infinitely. Right? So any two vectors on this line, we add those two, you're going to still be on the line because the line goes on infinitely. If you had a vector here and you add another vector, you're just moving along the line. It's not going to take you off the line. And it has to be the only vectors you can add are the ones on the line anyway which is going to keep you on the line. But there's a zero vector there. That's not in the space. So what if we took a vector on, on the line and multiplied it by zero? We'd end up there, which is not in the subspace. So we can't multiply by any scalar. So it's, that is not a subspace. Let's look at things that actually are subspaces. A line going through the origin. As we said here, you can add any two vectors and still be in the subspace and you can multiply by any number and you're just scaling these vectors, scaling them along the line. If you multiply by zero, you're just on the zero vector and the zero vector is on the line. So this is a subspace. What about if we take our axes here and just fill it in completely with one enormous plane that goes on forever? That's essentially a vector space. Um, is this a subspace as well? Can you add any two vectors? Well, yes, you add any two vectors, you're still within the, the whole of the 2D um, plane. And if you multiply by any constant, regardless how big the constant is, since the plane goes on infinitely in all directions, then 
nothing you can multiply with by is ever going to take you outside of this space. So that is a subspace. What about the zero vector on its own? Well, that is actually a subspace as well. Um, why is a zero vector a subspace? Um, so remember the rule. This may be obvious to you, but when I first learned this, it confused me. So I'm explaining this explicitly. So you've got u and v are two vectors, and they're in w, part of the set of w multiplied by any constant, and he's still part of w, right? All elements in w are just the zero vector, zero zero. Everything in the z the zero vector is zero zero. There's nothing else, obviously. So you add zero zero, you're left with zero, which is still in the subspace. Multiply by any number, and then you're still in the subspace because you can only add the vectors that are in the zero vector and the only vector that's in the zero vector is the zero vector. So u and v are always zero and zero and zero is always zero and k times zero is always zero so you never leave the subspace. So we'll just recap the subspaces we've looked at um, and you can remember in R2 there are three subspaces. Um, all of R2 just the entire vector space, this the massive plane, that's a subspace. Any line that goes through the zero vector must include the zero vector, that's a subspace, and the zero vector on its own is a subspace. Zero vector is often uh, denoted by this letter Z. And in R3 it's just you got a massive cube, which would be the other one, and then R3 would also have these as subspaces as well. So hopefully this has cleared up the basic ideas of subspaces and hopefully you can move on with linear algebra and have this idea cemented in your head.